work. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us at the Preferred Adventure Center for another Trailblazer Tuesday. And we're wrapping up the uh, series on communications and uh, having technical difficulties, so we have to actually start on the first slide. But what we're going to do, this whole series has been about how to handle crucial conversations in some degree or another because if they're not crucial, if they're easy, we're all good at that. You know, we're all good at having a good time. Well, most people. But uh, it's when it's crucial that matters. So we're going to recap a little bit about it. All right. First thing is recognizing when a conversation is crucial. All right. So it's really pretty easy. We all know it. We'll sense it because our own um, fight with light mechanisms will kick in, you know, and we'll grind our teeth or whatever it may be that you do when you're in a crucial conversation. But in reality, it is a conversation between two or more people. If you're talking to yourself, it's really not that crucial. Get over it, okay? But um, you got um, where the stakes are high. It means it has to be important. If it's not important, no big deal. Let's not have a crucial conversation over whatever, some football game or something. Opinions have to vary and the emotions have to run strong. Emotions have to be there. You can have varying opinions, but if people aren't emotional about it, it's really not that terribly important. Most decisions in the end are emotional decisions, whether we want to think that is true or not. It's true, okay? So when you're in this situation, emotions are high, the opinions vary, or the stakes are high, the opinions vary, emotions are running strong, you have three choices when it comes to those conversations, and most of them, us will habitually do one of these two things, three things. We avoid them, and that's probably the most common thing to do. It's why we don't talk about religion and politics. It's why we don't do a whole lot of things, is we simply avoid the conversation. Um, the second most likely thing to be done is we handle them poorly. And we, that really is the most likely thing to happen, or the next most likely thing to happen, because people, that's why we have arguments. That's why we have so many of them. When things count, people get testy and we don't handle the situation well. Alright? And then the last thing is we can face them and face them well. And you can learn to handle a crucial conversation well. Just one out of every three times. People will consider you, wow, this guy knows how to get things done. Or this person, you know, knows how to handle how handle things when they get sticky. Alright? So, that's a crucial conversation. Alright, so now, um, when you're in a crucial conversation, it affects a lot of things. It affects you, your community, it affects your team, it affects your relationships, your personal health, all those types of things. So when a crucial conversation comes along, if you want to help, it doesn't just make a difference to you, it makes a difference to everybody, everybody involved. You help everyone if you can recognize what's happening. And you look around at the other people involved and you look for signs of silence or violence. Those are the most common reactions. Look at them in yourself, look at them for someone else. People will either go silent or they'll become outspoken and confrontational most of the time. And when you see that happen in yourself or someone else, it's time to pull back because that conversation is going nowhere. If either of those two things are happening, nothing is going to be accomplished. All right, so it's very tricky sometimes, especially in a larger group, to be able to speak persuasively without being too confrontational. You need to be confident, but not arrogant. You need to be able to um, be accepting of other people's opinions because you, you very likely aren't 100% right, okay? but you have to let people know that you respect those opinions. So, let's say you're in the middle of a group conversation, things are obviously getting sticky, you think you've got a good point of view and you want to, you, you want to restate it, but if you just stand up and pound the table and say, this is what I think, you're probably in trouble. All right? Remember, early on we talked about how when people listen, they hear what you say, but then they make up a story about why you say it. You have to handle that early on. If you can get everybody to sit back, take a breath, remind them, hey, we're all on the same team here, okay? Let's just talk about this a little bit. Recap your facts. 
Now, when we say recap your facts, that's not saying why you think we should come to this conclusion. Stick to the facts, because if you can all agree on the facts, you're starting from a common ground. Recap your facts, and then you tell your story. This is the things that you thought of when you heard the facts. So, I, these are the facts, and I think this, because of this, this, and this, if we take these steps, we, we should come out with a good conclusion. That's your story. But now here's the key. You don't just tell your story and look around the room and say, so what do you think of my idea? You have to invite other people to, all right, now, first of all, are the facts that I, do you see the facts the same way I do? Now, tell me what you think because I might be wrong. And if you can bring yourself to say that, and you're genuine about it, and they'll know if you're lying, okay? Um, then people will thus they'll talk to you about their situation, and they'll probably mirror what you did. People mirror other people's activities. If you stay calm, you stay factual, you think about it in a logical way, and you invite their opinion in, they'll do the same for you. It's almost for sure that's what's going to happen. And talking tentatively. Um, ben Franklin was considered the great compromiser during when they were writing both the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. And um, Ben Franklin's an amazing guy. He uh, started his own newspaper at 17 years old. He was living on his own, making his own living when he was 13. Okay. When he was 22 years old, he decided that you could get more accomplished if you weren't confrontational, and he cut all words that forbade a definite opinion out of his language. He did not say, it is this, this, and this. He said, it appears to me that in this situation, now that sounds wishy-washy, but when you read what he wrote, you feel like you could argue with the guy. Or you could, and when I say argue, argue is a good thing if it's done well, okay? He didn't, he didn't come across as this person. He was perfectly also willing, it was a strategy of his during the Constitutional Congress to have other people think something was their idea. Be his idea, he'd go to lunch with them, you know, he'd kind of weasel around, talk about it, ask some questions, and then get them to come up with this brilliant idea and them suggest it. Because they, then he, he knew he had at least one person who agreed with him in the crowd. Okay? So, talk tentatively. Alright? And then the last thing is you got to encourage testing. If you come up with an idea or you're, you're coming up with a solution, it's based on the facts, you like your story, people, you're not getting a whole lot of argument or something like that, ask, well, what could go wrong? Alright? Just come out and ask. And See if you can get some responses to that. Okay. All right. Now, this goes back to remembering um, how to ask for something to get done. All right. We're going to recap that. It's really fairly simple, but you explain why you want something done. Remember, they're going to, if you ask somebody something or you tell them something, they're going to come up with a why story, so beat them to it. Give them your why. Why you need it done. What exactly you need done when you need it done. Now we should probably add to this, ask them if they need any help, if they know how to get it done or if they need any help getting it done. All right, um, and remember that we talked about safety. And this isn't just with one-on-one -on -one conversations, it's with a group. People need to feel safe to speak their opinion. And when things get out of line safety-wise, remind everybody involved you have a mutual purpose. And if you don't know what that purpose is, then you're in trouble. You maybe shouldn't be in part of the conversation. You have to be able to come up with that mutual purpose you all agree with. And then remind them, make sure they know you respect their opinion. Nobody wants to be in a conversation with somebody who really doesn't respect their opinion at all. Alright? That's the recap. Now I'm going to tell a little story about this because it worked amazingly well. It just took me three days to get it right, okay? Um, and this goes back at earlier on. I, I told a little story about um, me and my wife having a disagreement about um, what to do with something at home. And the disagreement escalated very quickly. And 
we were suddenly talking, honestly, I and my wife, we get along well. I mean, some people don't think so, but we do really trust me on this one. But uh, we get along well, and we were an argument about, or a discussion about something that was happening right now, suddenly turned into a heated argument about things that happened more than 20 years ago. And neither one of us would give up that argument. And um, we were, I mean, we were bad for three days. I tell you what, all last weekend, we were not happy campers. And um, I kept trying to, I said, I, I think better when I write. So I'm writing her a letter, and I'm writing her a letter, and I'm writing her a letter. And every time I read the letter, I realize I'm being a complete and total jerk about this. When I finally got to where I wasn't so mad that I could actually think about it, and I said, you know, honey, we both know in the long run we want to spend all eternity together, and this is really a minor thing. Our purpose is to have a good life and a good eternity together. We need to get over this. Went back recapped a few things and she says Danny and that's what she says when we're making up Danny I don't want to fight with you and you know it and it was over so it really does work under the most heated of situations because my wife's Wendell and she's really stubborn so anyways <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> it's a good thing I know she doesn't watch <laughs> Okay. Any questions, people? I know you're all thinking that I did this thing, whole thing on communications. You're hoping I learned some of it, so I'm trying. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us for another Trailblazer Tuesday. And remember, life is never going to be a walk in the park. So don't go on a walk. Go on an adventure. <laughs>